What's up, everybody? I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for all of the support that you've given me. And I am done. Okay, so I just finished up listening to Carl's Doomsday Scenario. Uh, this is the second book in the Dungeon Crawler Carl series by Matt Dineman. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts on finishing this book, which was just right now. So this is a really good book. Um, continues on very well with the first book. Uh, I had a lot more problems with this one than I did in the first one. More personal problems, but I mean, ultimately... All my problems are personal problems, right? I'm a person. Um, but I'm going to give this one a four out of five, which means I, I liked it. Um, I really liked it. Maybe I should give a four and a half out of five, but I'm going to stick to four because my, I did have a decent amount of problems here in the pacing and in the way the story went. Um, but, but yeah, ultimately, I like this book a lot. It's good stuff. I really, really get why people love this series. Um, and I'm finding that I really love the series, too, and I just can't wait to keep going in it. So if you're not familiar with what this series is, uh, this is a, a lit RPG, which means it's got a lot of video gamey type elements to it. It's a zany, hilarious, ridiculous, horror-ish, D&D-style book. That's a lot, that's a big mouthful, right? Uh, but I can't like define it to one thing, which I think is what a lot of people ultimately love about this series. It's, it's very fresh, it's very unique. Um, what this series is, and I'll kind of repeat a very small amount of the first book so you can get a flavor here so you know what I'm talking about, uh, is you've got this guy, Carl, who is, finds himself outside in the middle of the night trying to get his cat from a tree, and instantly all the buildings on Earth got flattened like stomping on a can, right? Just instantly went into the ground. And a voice comes on over uh, all across Earth that announces that Earth has been taken over by aliens. Uh, and they've actually like always been here um, and to, to create these events that would eventually happen. Uh, but they are have created a contest that is being broadcast to trillions of people across the universe that are that can't wait to watch this. It's like the greatest television program of all time. Uh, called I think it's called Dungeon Crawler World. And they've created a, a huge dungeon, multi-levels. I think it's like 18 levels. And everybody on Earth that survived, that happened to be outside at the time of this event, uh, is tasked with going down, fighting through these dungeons to try to get to the bottom. They get progressively harder. Uh, and if they win, they get to like rule earth or save earth or something like that. And it, it all through the while, it feels like a video game where you have these characters that are leveling up different stats. They're getting, you know, magical items that, you know, give them buffs. It feels like you're playing an RPG video game. That's, you know, very funny throughout. There's got these funny announcers that are constantly doing stuff. It's a blast to read. Um, the first book followed Carl through several levels of this dungeon uh, in, in a very traditional dungeon format. But a lot of what I loved about that book was learning about this world and the rules to the world, how different this is and how you would initially feel about this event happening and trying to put yourself in Carl's shoes to try to understand what's going on. That's gone in this one. Of course it's gone, right? I mean, you have to understand that Carl knows now what's up. And now we have to figure out where to go with the plot from here. Uh, Matt Dineman, the author, can't just rely on explaining things, which was really fun in the first book. Now he's got to tell a story. And not like the first one didn't have a story, but it's got to have more story to it. So the direction he chose to take this was to say, let's spend time on a single level here, not traveling through multiple levels, but let's spend time on one level. Let's take out the dungeon aspect. Let's make it like an open world kind of thing which is strange to me. I didn't love that. I kind of wanted the dungeon thing. Um, but even though it's kind of weird, but like, even though he's, they're progressing down levels, this level is like an open sky. I mean, it's not like you walk downstairs and you're at the next level. Like you kind of go through like a portal, I think. Um, and now they're in this, this level that's, uh, you know, got this kind of old school, like medieval vibe to it. And so I didn't love that that direction on things. I was willing to accept it, but I kind of wanted to get back to the dungeon thing, which I was enjoying uh, in this aspect of never knowing what's around the next corner and you can see things from a mile away. And ultimately what it felt like was this book felt more like a D&D &D 
quest. Because that's kind of what happened. You had essentially two major quests that occur here. Uh, I won't explain what they are, but Carl finds out that he can accept quests. They give him a lot of bonus points, a lot of, uh, you know, special things if you accomplish the quests. And that's what happens. So it felt more like a traditional story. It felt less like the Carl from the first book. And it felt more like a lot of other fantasy books that I've read before. It felt like a crossover between the two. And I really just wanted the Carl thing. Having said that, I had a lot of fun. Um, I liked one of the quests significantly more uh, than the other. The second one, which is great. I always want a book to end strong. And I felt like this book really did end strong. And ultimately left me really hungry to read more. Um, and I, I keep thinking that like I've never read a book or a series like this before. And... You know, I, I think more people need to read it. Now, in my Discord channel, which I would encourage you to join if you haven't, before, haven't already, it's a great place to chat about adult fantasy books. Um, hit the link down below if you want to join. Um, but a lot of people have started reading it now because I started reading it. And unanimously, I think the opinion ranges from it's good to it's incredible. That's awesome. That's what you want to hear. A lot of times I refer series to people. You know, I get some people going like, hey, Matt, glad you liked it. It wasn't for me. I haven't heard that about this one yet. It just hits that point of your brain that scratches this itch that's kind of like this addicting aspect. It's kind of the scratch that you get when you play an addicting RPG game. One of those games where, I don't know if you're a gamer like me, but where you blink and it's 3 a.m. That's kind of what happens here. And that's fun to read a book like that. I don't get to read a lot of books like that. Um, I read a lot of books where, you know, it's hard to read. You have to flip around to find out what's kind of going on and refer to other things and really invest a lot of brain power here. Here it feels like you're turning off your brain and you're turning on the fun. And that's cool. That's awesome that Matt Dineman was able to bring that to, to this series. Um, but yeah, had a couple problems with the plot. That's the only real problems I had here because everything else is there, right? You had the same characters. In fact, you've added some additional characters here. I think the character writing is incredible. I, I love them. Uh, they are so well realized. I feel like I'm there with them. Now, in part, the thing that makes me love these characters and this book series, and I, it's hard for me to divorce, you know, how much of my, my opinion on the series is because of this, but the audiobook. Now, the audiobook here is god tier. Uh, the, the narrator, Jeff Hayes, I don't know why I'd never heard of this guy before I started this series, but he is in the the s rank for narrators i don't think i've ever read or listened to a book that's better than this the only one that i could say is in that category is the first law um by stephen pacey which everyone i hear says that's the best i don't ever hear it from this probably because this one's less known but it's incredible from the first moment you flip on these books you're wowed by the not only the range that this uh this guy has but the quality of these different characters it's incredible i cannot figure out how he can do these voices i cannot figure out how he's able to do women voices as good as he does normally you find men kind of suck at doing women voices women kind of suck at doing men voices jeff is great at doing them both um and it's just amazing. I can't figure it out. I mean, he goes from these kind of low, deep voice for Carl, where you're like, oh, that's what he sounds like. But then you get this high pitch, like way different octaves uh, for for the other main character here, Princess Donut, the cat, who is well real. I mean, she's a in this dungeon, she's like a well-realized character. She can talk. It's a great dynamic between these characters. I love the duo of these two. This is like an all-time top fantasy duo. Uh, Princess Donut the Cat and Dungeon Crawler Carl. Um, but yeah, Jeff Hayes, incredible. This guy is, he's, he's among the best. And I cannot uh, recommend the audiobooks of this more uh, than for this series. But yeah, he brings these characters to life. And, you know, the, the fantasy elements here are top, top, top notch. I love it. It's, I'm a sucker for these Dungeons and dragons -y type things. It's so fun to hear these characters getting, you know, they accomplish some crazy task. You get this voice that comes on that says, you know, new achievement. And it explains what the achievement does. It's always really funny. Um, really funny. Once you embrace the zaniness of it, uh, because it's always trying to make jokes and be silly and it works once you embrace it. Uh, but find out what they get. These are rewards they get to make them, you know, their skills higher and their bigger powers and these different magical spells they have. It's 
awesome. It just embraces silly. And that's awesome. I want more books that do that. Uh, I'm sure they're out there. Maybe I'm just not finding them. Uh, if you know what they are, hit me up in the comments because I need to know more series that are kind of like this one. Um, but I don't think you're going to find an audiobook like this one. And I feel like somebody told me this was like one of the highest selling audiobooks. Maybe for, can't be all, all genres, but maybe just for fantasy. Uh, like last year maybe or something like that, which is crazy to me because I never heard it last year. But yeah, I mean, I don't know everything. Who, who am I? Well, I'm not, not nobody. Uh, and I'm not being sarcastic. Like I'm just, you know, what do we, what do we know in the grand scheme of things? Nothing. Uh, so yeah, everything about this book besides the plot direction that this took, and I don't want to claim the plot's bad, but I just didn't love it. And I'm worried that the direction of this series is going to be just a bunch of quests, these open world quests in different settings. You know, we're going to get a desert one. We're going to get a water world one or, you know, ice world or something like that. I hope that's not where we go because I'll probably be giving a bunch of four to fives, which is cool. I'll keep reading. I'll have a big smile on my face. I'll be happy. But I want to get back to the magic of the first book that I know the author has. Um, I certainly know the audiobook narrator can continue this wonderful performance. Um, but I want to see that plot kind of get back to what I'm hoping for out of the series. Uh, now, there is a good chance, maybe a greater than 50% chance, that most people prefer this book to the first one. They love this direction. I hope that's the case. Uh, um, you know, I would love to be the odd man out on that, but we'll see. We'll find out. I don't know. I don't read reviews before I rank my reviews. I'd love to read and find out after I'm done with this. Um, so go buy this book. Go buy this series. Pick it up on audiobook. It, you deserve it because you're awesome. And the series is awesome. So uh, I'm going to wrap things up there. Thank you so much for watching this review. And as always, happy reading to you. I want to give another shout out to my patrons, especially my Ascendant Tier and Librarian Tier patrons, Anna G, Brian, CJ, Darren, Jonathan, My Book is Lit, Nathan T, Nev's Book Channel, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Tahir, Anna, Andra, Angelo, Ben, Blair, Brock, Evan, Harry B, Jamie, Joe, Maria, Michael Sugarman, Sky, TW57, Wacky, and Zion.